Yes? Okay. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Uh, yeah, I'm here to present the yeah, paper using Dyn Cache for Content Coding, Shared Action Compression for the Web, which is a collaboration between the uh, database group at the University of Hamburg and Rod von Mingerat from the University of Oldenburg, and also Backend, which is part of my ongoing uh, PhD thesis. And to give you a bit of background, Backend is a research spin off from the uh, same uh, working group. Um, from the University of Hamburg, so um, they are interested in uh, or use some fancy caching mechanisms to um, yeah, cache dynamic content in the web. So, um, yeah, just as a bit of background. So, this is of course cool um, because uh, caching makes stuff faster, but at the end, uh, caching, um, uh, you have to uh, attach your data somehow, uh, no matter what your caching is, right? So the browser has this more or less uh, simple decision. Is my um, the stuff that I'm looking for in my cache, or it's not in my cache, right? And if it's not in my cache, I have to load it from the server. This, of course, uh, logical, but I found that a bit sad always, because if you look at a normal website, a server website in this example, um, you see that um, if you navigate through this website, for example, the uh, website of the university, um, you see there are a lot of similarities, right? The uh, header, for example, and probably the footer, which we can see here right now. And if you know a bit about uh, HTML, you know that the uh, boilerplate code underneath is uh, most of the stuff and not really the text which you are seeing here. So maybe you could think of it uh, instead of simple page loads, more about um, transitions from one state to another. So you could take the data between these two um, HTML files, and if you do that, you would see that the data is actually pretty small, it's not even the tenth of the actual data of the uh, second request. So it's a lot of wasted data for um, this transition. So maybe we could um, improve our caching so that we look for parts in our cache which we could reuse. So the um, general idea, and if we don't have this part, well, pass, well then we go the whole object. And we um, looked at this in a previous paper. Uh, we don't have to talk about the whole picture here. Um, the general idea was that we um, analyze journeys across different websites, and always seven steps. And the first part, um, steps were distinct page types, for example, the home page, an impressum, um, FHQ, or something like this. And at the end, we uh, tried to um, hit similar pages. For example, you, you navigate to a product, you get a recommendation, and you follow this recommendation, so you see it's similar um, content, but different products. Um, and what we saw was that um, if you hit this uh, hot place here, where you have uh, something in the cache which is similar, you um, save a lot of data. And this was uh, compared to normal GZIP on level 6, which is kind of the default in the web right now. And as you can see here, this dash line would be broadly on um, Compression level 11, which no one uses for dynamic content because it's just too slow. So you see there's a lot of uplift, so no one's better here. To make that clear. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is great, but uh, nobody is using it. So uh, what's the problem here? Well, first of all, calculating the data is quite simple. If you have uh, both uh, things you want to do. But there are many problems. Uh, the first problem is that um, you have missing information on both sides. On both sides, so you have client, and the client wants to request the product. So um, now, if you want to calculate the, the data, the product has to know where the data should be calculated from, right? But it cannot know what would be actually good data because it does not know how this, uh, how the uh, final page should look like. Um, so it doesn't know how to choose the dictionary. So you could offer this, of course, to the server, because the server has more capacity, but the server, on the other hand, does not know which um, source files are in the client cache. Of course, you could uh, deploy some um, stateful stuff, but you will never use this, because it's just too much, um, it does not scale really well. And even if you would um, track what the client has in its cache, you cannot be certain because browsers are pretty smart and they will evict stuff from the cache all the time and you <coughs> never know when this happens. So this is a problem. And the next problem would be the um, 
CDN cache as well. So we have a CDN deployed for websites normally. So um, yeah, we have a distributed cache. So if you um, request a file and some other person has already requested this file, you will get a cache as well from, the, from your new, uh, new server. And this is great, but if you use now the data encoding, which we have talked uh, previously on, um, you have a problem because you now have up to how many files you have on the server as data per file, so n squared files, so to say, which of course lowers the cache rate. Right? So for every yeah, file you could request, there are multiple versions. And yeah, you would blow up your whole CDN, and this would be kind of worthless. So you may would start and say, well, then let's reduce the complexity here, and we could um, extract a dictionary. So normal um, shared dictionary conversion. So you take all your HTML files, look for common strings, extract them into a dictionary, and this dictionary will then get used to calculate the data. So you have for every file which you could request, the normal file and the data. So the um, not so many files for your CDN to handle, and this would be all great. But the next problem here would be uh, how big should this dictionary actually be? Because if you put too much stuff in it, it's also worth it because now you push, I don't know, a couple of gigabytes over to your client, which you will never use. So if it's too big, that's bad, but of course if it's too small, it's completely useless because there's nothing you can do. This is bad. And maybe you have a, a really diverse website where um, you need multiple dictionaries because um, one side may not benefit from this dictionary like uh, another category site or something like this. And the last problem would be, you have, uh, at some point, you have to catch this dictionary. And this is actually a bit problematic. Uh, you see here is a really great graphic, <laughs> uh, which we talked about. Um, uh, the problem here is streaming, or streaming is a solution, not a really problem, but we would use this solution with this approach. Um, because if you would um, push now the uh, dictionary and the first page load and uh, the first page load and the first page load is an actual data to this um, dictionary, you would end up with kind of normal um, conversion at first. But of course, this dictionary would now be bigger than the normal dictionary, which would be part of this um, request. So you slow down the first request because you have to load more bytes. This is already bad, but it's getting, it's getting even worse because you now have to download the whole dictionary before you can actually start um, to decode your requested file because, as you can see here, maybe you have new data and instruction which, which needs something from the dictionary which is at the end of the dictionary. And uh, brothers are again pretty smart and they will start to pass the HTML file with every byte that comes in and maybe they see already, okay, here's a script which I have to download, so you could start but we lose this because we now have to wait until both things are here, so we can no longer stream it and have to do um, yeah, the conversion first, which is again bad. And the next <laughs> problem here is that the signal is always a gamble if we want to push it, because um, for example, you start here and you say, well, I want to go to the home page, and the server says, well, of course, here is the home HTML file. And now you would say, okay, we could now push this dictionary because we would not slow the browser down. The browser is maybe idling, the user is clicking on the, uh, looking through the page and is doing nothing, so we could just push it over the dictionary. And from there we could use this dictionary to calculate our data for the upcoming request, which would uh, save a lot of data, of course. But the problem here is that we never know if the user actually would uh, use this dictionary. And if the user leaves after just one request, we now push this unnecessary data over and maybe depending on the um, kind of device, maybe on mobile or something, you um, yeah, uh, put unnecessary, unnecessary stress or um, stuff like this on your mobile device. Uh, and this is wasted. And what's also important to note is that um, users that are just uh, or bouncing after just one um, page impression are not that uncommon because you can imagine you go to Google, you search for something, you go on the website, they can all go back. And so you have a lot of these users and you will push a lot of unnecessary data and so on. This is not so bad. And maybe another approach would be uh, well, you could also just calculate the data from the home page, assuming that there are enough similarities between the home page and our other pages because 
again, they shared our stuff. So um, now whether or not we validate our second homepage as a dictionary, again, we would only have one data per file, so this would be fine for your CDN. And yeah, it should, be, should work. But as we see in this graphic, and I don't know if you can see it here, but the uh, blue um, line here is where we tested this in our previous paper. And yeah, as you can see, there, there's not really a great benefit. But I also have to say that this includes not only HTML files, but all um, text content for this uh, journey here. So yeah, there's a bit of improvement, but not so much. So again, a bit wasted. So our idea now was that we um, want to introduce page type dictionaries. And the idea is quite simple, that um, the server could um, uh, pre-decide uh, pre which dictionary he wants to use. And the level, for example, takes all products and randomly picks one um, product, and this is now the dictionary. And our hypothesis was that uh, no matter what we choose here, this should always um, bring uh, a bit of uh, a great uplift in terms of data saving. And again, we could now push this dictionary over. We don't have to do it. We could just do it. Um, because again, uh, same problems as before. If we push it, we um, may waste um, data time. But now, um, if the user gets along this um, tag dictionary, he could just um, use it as a yeah, request, uh, as, as, a, as a, a dictionary. And then the server can just get rid of the data and push the dictionary over. Of course, this only works if you um, at some point hit this dictionary, which is tagged as a dictionary. Um, but if you do, this is great. You could also optimize here further. And for example, um, instead of pushing the whole dictionary, which is an actual HTML file, which is um, important here, not just a plain dictionary. <coughs> you could also, um, if you, for example, have some edge computing uh, in the cloud uh, in your CDN, um, um, ca <laughs> calculate this dynamically um, from wherever page you were previously. And this doesn't have to be cached this dynamic calculation. So you could dynamically calculate this dictionary by idling. And after that, you have this dictionary in the cache. And this is great. Um, you could also apply some smart um, um, approaches here to take this dictionary, not just randomly, but you could, for example, choose um, something like a hot page on your website, which could be something like, which is promoted on your website, for example, a news article which, uh, which people are reading or a product which is on sale, so where you already assume that people will navigate to this. And this would uh, have additionally the benefit that this dictionary now serves as a real HTML file. So if the user really serves, uh, wants to navigate to this site, we will get an instant, instant page load because it's already part of the cache. So this has uh, two roles. So we wanted to evaluate this, evaluate this but uh, we couldn't deploy it because there's no, no browser support so far. Uh, so this is uh, um, on um, yeah, data, which, we, which is part of backend's tracking um, or backend's uh, customers. And we, uh, we, take, we took uh, 1.2k HTML files across uh, six websites, and these were the most requested uh, uh, websites uh, or HTML files on the site. We then calculated every data within the same type. So, for example, here the homepage, uh, a product of a certain website, and calculate every data and see uh, what the output mm -hmm. would be. For this, we used uh, all these custom dictionaries. So. Um, as you may know, Woodley is a, a compression library for which, which uh, supported by all major browsers, but only with its own um, dictionary. So Woodley uses a, a shared dictionary approach, but the dictionary is always part of the compression and decompression library. But you can replace it, but not in the browser. This is not supported there. But we tested this uh, with uh, yeah, the Woodley library itself. And we compared this against the uh, standard Woodley approach. So, which would be the uh, de facto standard in the web. And uh, these, are, these are the good art, these are the results over here. Um, and yeah, it's uh, work as we expected. Choosing an arbitrary page of the same uh, type as the dictionary is always beneficial. Uh, as you can see here, in most cases, uh, for example, listed pages are pretty well for this, um, up to 90% or something like this. Product pages are a bit worse, but still pretty great, right? Above uh, 75%. Uh, 
uh, of data saving. Of course, products work a bit worse because uh, they um, have kind of unique websites, depending on the website, of course. You have your online shop with uh, unique products, they have, of course, unique sites, maybe. Um, but if you have a specialized shop, they, are, they all share some great amount of similarities. But again, no matter what you choose, it was always enough. And you can see it's divided across the, um, the websites that we looked at. As you can see, most of the websites performed pretty well. It was one customer with some unique sites, which um, of course performed worse, as I always said. But again, still uh, major savings, no matter how we choose the dictionary. And, and of course, you could uh, um, go further on with the research and uh, make a more um, sufficient approach to uh, the select dictionary, because this is just random, right? Just with no, no reasoning. Okay, and, and lastly we, took at the, we looked at the time, and as you can see the compression time doesn't really um, change much. Here's a small output, so uh, um, smaller is better here, right? So uh, we saved about a milliseconds on average for the um, compression time, for the default compression level, which is of course uh, nothing to talk about. Um, for the higher compression levels, uh, this is a lot second we could uh, save here, but again this is nothing you would uh, normally use in a deployment. And for the decompression, <coughs> again, a bit faster because of course you have now um, larger chunks which you just can copy, uh, copy from your even smaller um, data. So uh, a bit of saving here, but again not really worth mentioning. So to come to a conclusion, um, yeah, data encoding is able to save most of the data for HTML files, uh, for, for server-side rendered uh, HTML files, of course. And most approaches are not feasible because, as I already said, the complexi complexity is too high. But uh, taking a common page as a page type dictionary could save, um, well, can get rid of these computations for a dictionary. And yeah, reduce letters to only one uh, data per file and yeah, avoids potentially avoids um, uh, pushing this un uh, use this dictionary if you won't use it. And lastly, it serves also as an actual HTML file so you can um, reuse it and not just only as a dictionary. So that was it. Thanks. Okay, uh, to be consistent, uh, I ask for urgent questions again. There is one. Yeah. Um, you showed this dictionary question for HTML files, but if you look at the normal or average website, it consists mostly of graphics and pictures and error. Yes. So is it even worth compressing it? Uh, that's a great question, and uh, yes, it is. Um, maybe I should use the microphone. Yes. <laughs> um, the, the thing here is that. Um, in terms of just saving data, it's correct that uh, the HTML file is, of course, just a small portion of it. But if you look at the greater picture, for example, in the case of Backend, which uh, provides the service for millions of users, of course, this already sums up. And even if you would maybe um, look at um, uh, bad connection cases, for example, if you are in the, um, in the train or something, like that, your connection is already uh, cutting off and stuff like this. Uh, this could be really the change if you could um, yeah, reduce this to a couple of uh, milliseconds so you are able to get the HTML file and look at it because otherwise you couldn't even use the page because of that, right? Or if you have some hotspots where the data is limited because too many uh, connections or something like this, this could also make a difference. And finally, um, yeah, for um, the um, HTML file is, of course, the critical part for the uh, whole loading process. So as soon as uh, you need the HTML file to load every, every other stuff. So if this gets delayed, everything else gets delayed. And of course, um, as many studies have already shown, um, page loading times are really important for the um, satisfaction of the users. So if this takes too long, they are um, yeah, abandoned the process. OK. so. We take everything yeah. else offline. Okay. So thank you again to all the three speakers <laughs> for being in time. Um, so this concludes today's program.
enjoy dinner and hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow at 10 when day 3 of Samstag starts. Ja. <lacht> ja. 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 Ja.